Wichita State beat Kansas in the showdown of the Sunflower State. And the number one and the number two seeds in the East region. We're talking about Villanova and Virginia. Couldn't make it out of the round of 32. Are we set up for more surprises with Sweet 16 play here? You know it. That's how it works. Joe Quinn from the drive on AM 590 Omaha. Uh, Omaha's ESPN Radio. Good to see you, hey, Joe. Mike. Thanks. Hi, that's, Joe. That's a lot to Welcome say back. in there. You guys have it a is. It's a mouthful. Long name. It Thanks is. for having me in, though. So, what do you think so far um, of the tournament? Your your team's out. You had Iowa State, right? I had Iowa State going to the Final Four, like a lot of people. So mm -hmm. I wasn't alone in that. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a topsy turvy tournament so far. A lot of surprises. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the one thing we're all the least surprised with is Mary's Wildcats mm -hmm. uh, continuing to win. But mm. uh, overall, I think it's been uh, a lot of fun. The, the quality of the basketball, in my opinion, maybe hasn't been quite as high, but that doesn't mean the games haven't been exciting because I think everybody, save for perhaps Kentucky, is playing kind of all yeah. on the same level this year. Uh, Georgia State would have been a great story. That coach was something else. Yeah, his, uh, you know, the, the father-son connection there yeah. with R.J. Hunter and then Ron Hunter being the, uh, the head coach was great. And, you know, watching him at the end of that first game where they ended up getting the upset, uh, falling off his off stool the chair, yeah. and then cracking the cast that he had uh -huh. on his leg from the previous celebration it was, was great. great. But, you know, that's, that's the one thing maybe that this year's tournament is lacking a little bit is a true Cinderella. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, even the teams that are lower seeds that are left, you know, Michigan State has won titles. Yeah. Wichita State's been to the Final Four now. So, I mean, yeah, th there are some good stories left. UCLA is actually the lowest seeded team left in the field, but, right. but UCLA but not a mid -major. UCLA's not a Cinderella. But what did you think of this game? Were you surprised that the Wichita State beat Kansas? Or they were on fire. What did you think? You know, I was actually not surprised to see Wichita State win this game, and it's, it's kind of twofold. I mean, Wichita State's one of those teams now that's been in the tournament for a couple years. They went to the Final Four. They've got some older guys at really key spots, especially uh, at the point guard and shooting guard spot, and Kansas this year has just kind of been sloppy at times, mm -hmm. a little inconsistent, uh, and you know, with as much hype around this game, especially for Wichita State, and you know, the whole factor that Kansas doesn't want to play them during the regular yeah. season, I think that uh, they had a lot more to gain in this game, and so I wasn't surprised to see it go this way. Kentucky remains undefeated mm -hmm. in the regular season, and the, the tournament obviously. Do you think anybody can beat them? Let, let's assume Kentucky's off. And, and other teams close to perfect in that scenario. Well, think? I think there's two teams that you got to look at that are capable of beating Kentucky, and both of them would actually match up with them in the first round of the Final Four. And that would be uh, Wisconsin, I think, has the size to do it. Mm -hmm. They have the experience, and they don't make a lot of mistakes, which I think is something that's going to be important if you're going to beat Kentucky. I think the other team is Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, they play a defensive style that I think could give Kentucky a lot of problems, a little bit different than what you see other places. And they're another team that has some veterans on, on the squad that would be capable of doing it. And ironically, both of those teams are in the same region, so yeah. they're only going to get a shot at one of them. But uh, I do think that if Kentucky plays the way they have the first two rounds, to get off to that kind of slow start and just look like they're – a little bit on cruise control against Wisconsin or Arizona. I do think that those are two teams that can get it done. And basketball, all it takes is a bad shooting night. But the yeah. problem with Kentucky, they're so deep. So if you mm -hmm. have two or three guys who are shooting the ball bad, you put two or three more guys that in for them. That platoon system is killing people. They do. They're very deep and they're very, very good defensively because yeah. they're so yeah. big. I mean, really they've got huge. four or five guys yeah. that are seven feet tall. That clip that we saw right. where they were dunking the ball over the top of the other Carl team. Anthony. Is incredible. Carl Anthony uh, Towns really? and Willie Colley Stein mm. are both incredible players. Mm -hmm. They're going to be good players in the NBA, too. First three rounds. We saw eight cities host the games. Yep. Uh, Omaha was right up there in terms of attendance. Uh, were, you, were you surprised that Omaha hung right up there toward the top? No, not at all. And I mean, I think it goes to just show how great of a town Omaha is when it comes to special events like this. I mean, you know, we saw a, a lot of Kansas fans and a lot of Wichita State fans obviously making the track. But you know what else we saw? We saw a lot of Creighton fans. We saw a lot yeah. of people wearing their Nebraska red. I mean, mm -hmm. just fans of basketball, fans of events. You see with the College World Series and things like that, that. You know, the reason you see you know Louisville and Columbus higher on that list, to be honest with you, is because the arenas are bigger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that if the, the CenturyLink Center had you know a few more thousand seats, you'd probably see that number even higher. Well, and you had Cincinnati and, Ken, and Kentucky, those two, can Cincinnati mm -hmm. and Lexington, within about an hour of Louisville, right. and so the drive is next to nothing for yeah. those teams. Well, I think Louisville's, their arena is like 20,000, mm -hmm. 21,000 in there, yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about Creighton and Nebraska. You mentioned just mm -hmm. basketball fans in this state. Right. What do you think of those teams? If we're looking ahead to next year, did you see anything encouraging? I mean, a number of close calls for both programs this season. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, for Nebraska to kind of start out there, actually, we got, we got Creighton up right now yeah. on the screen. Let's just start with Creighton. I mean, I think, you know, given what they lost from a year ago, you know, expectations were 
you know, in the minds of fans, probably a little higher than what they should be. But I think you saw at the end of the season a, a lot of reason for optimism. I mean, they were playing better at the end of the year than what they were at the beginning. Uh, James Milliken was a guy who came in as a transfer that really, you know, started to come into his own at the end of the year. I think losing Avery Dingman, or I'm sorry, uh, Isaiah Zierden to, to injury really hurt this team in the middle part of the season. But I think, you know, if you're a Creighton fan, there's a lot of reason for optimism. And, you know, the coaching staff did a really good job given what they had coming back this year. Um, Nebraska, I think you have more questions once you have answers at this point. And, you know, if Taron Petaway decides to declare for the NBA draft, that's obviously going to change well, things. Do you think he will? I don't think he will. I, I, think, it would be a, I think it would be a mistake. Um, you know, given his family situation, you know, perhaps it's, it's the right decision. But I think just based on purely a basketball perspective, I don't think he has the necessary skills to be successful at that level yet. Not, not yet. to say that he can't right. get there. Well, he had a better season last year. Mm -hmm. Right. He didn't play well. Right. Should we question the chemistry between? I mean, fans love Coach Miles, but after locking those players out of the locker room one night, I don't know if a lot of these guys are how they stay with the chemistry. Well, I all. think I think it's okay. I think it's just you know they. You know, at the, at the end of last year when they ended up going to the NCAA tournament, everybody sort of thought that was, oh, this is what Nebraska is. I think that they were a little ahead of schedule, got on a good run, you know, kind of caught lightning in a bottle, if you will. What we saw this year was probably a little bit lower than what they actually are. You know, they, a lot of things break against them. So I think the true Nebraska team where they're at right now is probably somewhere in the middle. You know, maybe an NIT berth would have been what the expectation should have been this year, but a lot of people wanted to see them go to the NCAA tournament. The great news for Nebraska is they've got a great recruiting class coming in. They've got some guys that are going to become eligible that transferred in after this last season. So you're going to see a lot different pieces, I think, next year. And some, you know, some guys that maybe bring some different skills to the table that they were really lacking, especially on the offensive end. Yeah, listen, it's March. I know that we're talking basketball, but it's also spring football. They're mm -hmm. off this week because of spring break. But what, what are you hearing out of camp this year? You know, it's, it's such a different vibe than what it's been the last couple seasons because everything is so new. And I think people have a lot of interest in knowing, oh, what's going on with the new coaching staff and the new system and the new offense and the new defense and everything. But the, the problem is, is that these guys are still at a point where they're trying to learn each other's first names even. I mean, you know, and what you call the play last year, you're calling it something different this year. So there's literally so much newness that people are interested in. I think, you know, in camp, everything is, is so new that it's really hard to get a gauge on where anything's really at because they're still in that real feeling out process. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll tell you what, the, the vibe around the program is completely different. And with the different personality of the coaching staff, I think that's exactly what you would expect. And I don't know about you guys, I'm really looking forward to seeing the product on the field mm -hmm. in the spring game and Can't then wait. of course yeah. in the I'm next fall. Uh, the last time you were here, we'll, we'll show you some information because we're running out of time, mm -hmm. but you were with, you were with Nick, uh, your, your cohort, and then you were <laughs> also with Trev Alberts from UNO talking about this run and walk. Registration is still open. Give us a word about why our viewers should be there. Well, I'll tell you what, it. it's for a great cause. It supports UNO student athletes, the Clawson Leahy Run and Walk. We're going to be a part of it. It's a ton of fun uh, for the whole family. Um, this UNO student athletes are out there interacting with the kids and everything. So you see all the info on the screen. Highly encourage you to go and check it out. It's, uh, it's a really good time on a Saturday. And hopefully by then the weather will be nice. And it was sunny skies last year and hoping that it's going to be that way this year. Yeah, good stuff, Joe. Thanks Thank for your time you. today. Thank you. Great Appreciate to see you as always. Um, you know, we talked a lot about basketball. March is just more than just basketball. Why do you want to add a new app to your phone before the end of the month? That's still ahead. Plus, the bunny's busy. Now's the time to get hopping on those Easter baskets. Ideas for what to put in them in less than three minutes.